<clears throat> this is a cold reading from chapter one. Once again, guys, all portable electronic devices, including cell phones, must be turned off and put away. Although we never anticipate a change in cabin pressure at once should occur, for you will oxygen mask will drop from the compartments overhead. To activate the flow of oxygen, pull down the mask until the plastic tubing is fully extended. Place the mask on the nose and mouth and breathe normally to carry the mask with the elastic strap. Continue wearing the mask until the device is notified by a uniform. Remember, travel with shelter for anyone needing special assistance. Please visit I am an assassin. Contrary to popular belief, my targets have not been dictators, leaders of war, or politicians. At least, not in the literal sense. They are comprised of corporate executives, soon to retire, or those who, for whatever reason, cannot be trusted any longer with valuable trade secrets. It is with great trepidation that I write these words, for my intention is to publish a book the one you are reading now, so as to reveal this vast underbelly of corporate endeavor, and if my goal be met, I myself am likely to become the same as my targets. Luckily for me, the nature of this work keeps me on the move and hard to find. I have several home addresses, none of which I occupy. I spend half my time in the air and much of the remainder in buses, taxis, and hotels. A lot of time in hotels. All in all, in my 20-year career, I've eliminated over 130 liabilities, as they are referred to. I am part of a network of contractors who do not know one another, let alone by call sign or infamy. We each work independently and alone. Knowing my methods, I suspect that I have crossed paths with others of the same ilk posing as I do as business travelers. You see, I am employed by corporations that are able to garner any identity for me needed to complete the assignment. These are not corporations that you've heard of. These corporations, if you can call them that, own the corporations that own the corporations you've heard of. The assignments I carry out ensure positioning in the global marketplace. Once completed, they mold via lethal termination the leadership structures of powerful corporations you have heard of so as to steer trends favoring my client's security. Sometimes it's as simple as preventing retirement benefits from manifesting, but usually it has to do with the control of information. In this, those interested parties have a strategic outlook whereby only they have access to the most advanced technologies. These entities are even beyond the limits of technologies that the entire military-industrial complex must suffer through to symbolically assert its authority. So, as one can imagine, when you are employed by those who very well may be mankind's truest leaders of technological achievement, to terminate, eliminate, retire, or kill as a service, and these employers supply you with the means necessary to do said service in such a manner that ensures detection impossible, you quickly discover how fragile life can be and how strange technology. For instance, when tracking the target, an agent becomes ever aware of the seeming omnipresence of cameras and utilizes this invasive presence as a means to locate their target unawares. From old tube televisions to cell phones and wristwatches, manufacturers have been installing chips and transmitters without even knowing it for years. And the image and sound acquired through these devices can easily be retransmitted to any field agent in need. Anyone can be watched at any moment, almost anywhere. Now in this line of work, there seems to be an impression that we are masters of marksmanship and martial arts, that perhaps we have a keen understanding of poisons, 
I myself have not fired a weapon in 15 years. I don't even carry a firearm, and I know nothing of martial arts. Never have. As for poisons, that time has passed. There's better ways now. We approach our assignment with the utmost precaution. Our methods assure success and discretion. You see, in the business of untimely demise, the challenge is to fit in with what seems a natural finish. And like a car, no matter how pampered whose engine one day throws a rod, so too does a man's heart give way to fatigue. It is here that we find the staggering statistics of mortality, and masked within that number our assignments find their home on the charts, never to be questioned and even under the scrutiny of autopsy still showing to be the inevitable visit from nature's end. <laughs>